Hello everyone. Uh, we'll discuss about the uh, role of anamnesis in the periodontal assessment. So through this presentation, I will explain to you what exactly do you mean by anamnesis and what is the importance of that. Now, the first thing is we need to understand the assessment of the periodontium, which is the most important thing. So, uh, the most important uh, thing which we need to consider is it is mandatory that all the patients who are presenting to a general dentist or a general practitioner, regardless whether he has a perio issue or no, you have to do a comprehensive assessment, which is mandatory. And it is very, very important for us to know the patient as a whole and we need to evaluate the patient periodontally also. So, in order to do the assessment, we should have a thorough knowledge about the periodontal assessment and a failure to assist or uh, to assess the periodontal health of a patient in a routine examination is always a negligent omission. So we have to be very very careful and we need to evaluate the patient. The clinician should make it a point that he does an overall appraisal of the patient, an assessment of the signs and symptoms with the history from the basis of and the continuity of the problem establishing the diagnosis is very very important for the patient. So we discuss about the dental history, the medical history and the social history and its importance. So anamnesis means taking the history, a thorough history by the doctor is called anamnesis. Now dental history. What all do you discuss in a dental history? See patients are unaware that they have a periodontal problem. They are only aware when it is relatively very late stage, when the patient comes to us, when the tooth is painful or tooth is loose. Okay, So we need to know that the patient may also have pain and can present with so many other issues. But then we need to know that what exactly is patient's problem and what are the other problems associated which you can only get it by knowing the history of the patient. But the dental history. In that, you need to know how long is the patient aware of his or her problem. Does he know the nature of the problem, the nature of the symptoms and have these symptoms have changed from beginning till today? Second thing is, did the patient receive any previous dental treatment or at least scaling every six monthly or at least yearly once or at least once in lifetime? Has the patient been a regular attendee for a dentist? And if yes, then when? Did the patient undergo any type of uh, oral hygiene instructions from a dentist? Did the patient ever go for a checkup? That means indirectly or directly, we need to find out is the patient compliant or not. Then we need to know about the patient's oral hygiene practices, what type of brush, what type of brushing technique, brushing frequency, whether it is a manual brush, powered brush, whether dental brushes or flosses are used daily, what type of toothpaste or a mouthwash especially, or are the patient aware of uh, water pick, water jet, what are they exactly using, how are they using, what is the frequency of the usage. And when do they change the brush is also very, very important. Then the most important concern to us is if the patient complains of bleeding gums, then when is the bleeding happening? Occasionally, regularly, does it happen during brushing only or during chewing, during eating, pain associated sometimes? We need to find out about that and you need to be specific in addressing the complaint of the patient. And then the family history of periodontal problems. That means they did the, the patient's uh, family members have undergone any periodontal problem or periodontal treatment, regular periodontal treatment that also need to be known. Then is the most important is the medical history. Medical history, so many, many aspects of patient's medical history may be particularly relevant for us for periodontal care and we are going to discuss few more of them. So some diseases may increase the susceptibility to periodontal disease. This is very, very important. Example, diabetes or example, HIV. These conditions may definitely increase the susceptibility to make the disease worse. Or there are also some medical problems which may have periodontal manifestations. You may consider any of the mucocutaneous disorders. You may consider uh, example like leukemia and all. They are, they are medically there and they will only represent periodontal initially which you need to find out and you need to treat them. Then you need to take the history of the medications because they have a lot of side effects. You know very well about calcium channel blockers, you know about nifedipine, you know about uh, cyclosporine, you know phenytoin. So you need to have a uh, drug history also. Then, is a periodontal infection risk factor for systemic infection? Yes, so you need to find out. You need to know that there is an emerging data which is always there which shows that there is association of periodontal disease with some medical illness. 
which could be cardiovascular, it could be stroke, which could be diabetes, osteoporosis, low uh, birth weight infants or anything. So we need to find out that. Then we, the most important thing is why are we trying to find out because we need to know and we need to take the precautions to avoid the complications during periodontal treatment or during periodontal surgery. Particularly existing or previous conditions which are there, we need to know because we may have to go for an antibiotic prophylaxis, we may have to go uh, for a modification if the patient is on antiplatelet drugs, anticoagulant drugs, we need to find out that. Treating certain conditions may also present a risk to dental team or, or a periodontist, a communicable disease. So we need to know that. Few patients you need to avoid ultrasonic instrumentation or debridement. That is because of the aerosol problems. So you need to understand that also. So these are the most important things which you need to address to understand the medical history of the patient. Then is the social history. So a social history should include the details about the habits, about especially tobacco, smokeless tobacco and everything, and alcohol consumption. Smoking history is always very, very important for current smokers, whether he is a past smoker, whether he wants to quit the smoking or no, is also very, very important. Whether the patient is interested to uh, understand about nicotine replacement therapy, patient wants to quit uh, tobacco, what are the side effects of tobacco, patient should be aware of it. So you need to take the social history about the patient. And then the most important is the patient's occupation. Because when you know the patient's occupation, there are some specific dental issues which happen with few specific occupations. Like uh, few occupations needs a lot of aesthetic desires. Few occupations will need uh, like a wind instrument player or a tailor. We have got uh, problems with the uh, non-cervical lesions or non-carious lesions. So you have got a lot of issues with patients. So you need to understand. Nevertheless, you also need to also understand that the patient's issues related to stress in his patient's life, in his personal life, even that is also important because you can attribute stress also as one of the risk factors. We need to consider all these things and then, then go for the periodontal assessment which will be the uh, clinical assessment. So these history taking, this anamnesis is very very important and the crucial part of the periodontal assessment. Thank you so much.